Hello, I'm meteorologist Nathan Scott here to talk about everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse happening on April 8th. 2024. This is going to be an impressive event. And fortunately, here in Arkansas, a lot of us will be able to witness this amazing event as long as skies are clear. In this video, I'll talk about what an eclipse is, what happens during an eclipse, how you can view the eclipse safely, and other details that you would love to know. So be sure to share this video with your friends and family because we've got a lot to talk about. First of all, an eclipse. Yes, we are expecting the path of totality or the darkest part of the moon's shadow to make its way across parts of the natural state. What develops the eclipse in the first place is a perfect alignment between the sun, the moon, and the earth. So much so that the entire disk of the sun is hidden by the moon and the moon will cast a very dark shadow over a narrow part of the earth. And here in Arkansas, we will be in that path, which is known as the path of totality. So when the sun is covered up 100% by the moon, it's not entirely dark. This is what it looked like 2017 in Nashville. This is from a snapshot of a YouTube video that was a time lapse. And you can see it's not entirely dark, but the city lights come on. It looks like the sun just set about 10 minutes ago, but this happened during the middle of the afternoon. And this type of sky that you see, this ombre sky, that will be witnessed not only to the west, but pretty much 360 degrees across the horizon. So who is in the path of totality other than Arkansas? It starts in Mexico, moves through Texas, Austin, Dallas, of course here in central Arkansas, Paducah, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Syracuse, and up through Maine on April 8th. When we break down more details, the darkest part of the moon's shadow will be racing across this part of the country over 1,600 miles per hour. 227 entering from Mexico into Texas. They will see totality in Waco, Fort Worth, Dallas around 240, and then the moon shadow continues to move into the natural state. So here, roughly in central Arkansas, we'll see it close to 250, 251. It doesn't last very long, only two to four minutes because the moon shadow, once again, is traveling over 1600 miles per hour. So by three o'clock, it's entering into Missouri, Illinois, and then it continues to push its way across Indianapolis, Cleveland, into Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Watertown, New York, Burlington, Vermont, and finally in the Maine before it exits into New Brunswick, Canada around 535. So let's talk about what's going to be happening here in the natural state. This is when you can expect totality to start in your city. Take a look at it, find your city right there, and keep in mind, if you are between these two orange lines, you will see a total solar eclipse of the sun. Anyone to the east, like Pine Bluff, Stuttgart, Fordyce, the sun will almost be gone, but you're not gonna experience the impressive phenomenon when it is 100% covered. Totality first reaches the Queen, 146. Hot Springs, 149. Little Rock, 152. 150 in Russellville, 152 in Searcy, 152 in Clinton, and 156 in Jonesboro. The length of totality is more impressive than what we saw back in 2017, when it only lasted about two to three minutes. This time, it's gonna last pretty much four minutes right along this red line. So those are going to be the most popular spots that everybody's going to flock to, especially Russellville, because it's right off the interstate. The Queen's a little bit harder to reach, but anywhere within this path of totality, expect probably a lot of traffic as we get closer to the eclipse, especially eclipse day on April 8th, and then right after the eclipse, everybody's gonna try to leave pretty much after totality. Here in Little Rock, we'll experience totality around two minutes and 20 seconds, but Russellville, four minutes and 12 seconds, Clinton, four minutes and 15 seconds. Again, if you're to the east of this orange line or to the west of this orange line, Fayetteville will not see totality. Fort Smith will also 
close, but not experience the full effect of totality. Here's a more detailed view of all the cities in the path of the darkest part of the moon's shadow, and we'll experience that 100% coverage of the sun. It includes Ashdown, Texarkana, Hope, Prescott, Arkadelphia, Murfreesboro, Malvern, Hot Springs, Mount Ida, Mena, Benton, Little Rock, Maumelle, Cabot, BB, Ward, Conway, Moralton, Greenbrier, Russellville, Clarksville, Dover, Clinton, Heber Springs, Mountain View, Batesville, Newport, Walnut Ridge, Perigold, Pigott, and into a Cherokee Village. So a large part of the state will be able to witness this really once in a lifetime event. The last time that we had an eclipse across Arkansas was back in uh, 1918. So it has been quite some time. Now, the most important thing, when you are viewing an eclipse, you have to do it safely. You never wanna look at the sun directly without proper eye protection. And what would be proper eye protection? Well, I'm sure you've seen these sold in a lot of stores. We actually have a lot of places listed on THV 11's website, so be on the lookout for that. But not all glasses are created equal. So here's what you wanna look for. When you purchase these glasses, you wanna look for the ISO label 12312-2. And according to the American Astronomical Society, there are a lot of manufacturers that are reliable, but some aren't. Here are all the manufacturers, a small list now, that are reliable with solar filters, solar eclipse glasses. Um, there's other eclipse, I guess, um, materials that you could purchase from these vendors. So American Paper Optics, those are the most popular ones that make those paper glasses. You can also buy other glasses such as these, which are a little more fancy, uh, but they will not wear out whatsoever. And if you have old Eclipse glasses from 2017, those primarily should be in good condition, uh, safely to, safe to use as long as I would say the paper's not torn on the lens, the lens is not wrinkled, so just inspect them. And the best way to really get a view on if these glasses are safe is you go outside, don't look at the sun just yet, but go outside, put the glasses on, and if they look like a dark, dark sunglass type, and you can still see objects, you can still see cars, you can still see tree branches, these may not be strong enough to really protect your eyes. There are several glasses out there, so you wanna make sure that you are getting the, the right ones. When you put on true Eclipse glasses that filter out, I would say 99% of the sun's harmful rays, UV rays and also visible rays, you should not be able to see anything when you're inside except maybe the center of a halogen light bulb or maybe LED light. When you go outside, it should only be the sun or a reflection of the sun on a vehicle. If you're seeing anything other than that, that filter may not be strong enough. So certainly keep that in mind. And the only time that you can take off the eclipse glasses and not use eye protection during the eclipse phase is when it is 100% covered. So I know that's a lot of information. Hopefully you got all that. Once again, we've got a list of where you can buy Eclipse glasses on THV 11's website. And then this website right here will have more manufacturers that are reliable according to the American Astronomical Society. Let's walk you through the timeline of this solar eclipse. This is for Little Rock now. There you see, eclipse glasses need to be worn. 1233, the eclipse starts to begin. So when you put on your eclipse glasses, say around 1235, 1236, you're going to see the disk of the sun. It's gonna probably look pretty orange in it. And then you'll see pretty much a semicircle or a little bite of the sun starting to disappear as the moon's shadow is making its way across the sun's disk. But the most impressive event is going to be, once again, totality, 100% coverage. And there you see, you don't have to wear the glasses. This is the only time you can look directly at the sun when it is 100% covered. At 152 here at Little Rock, and then once the sun starts to reappear, 
put those glasses back on and keep them on, the eclipse will be entirely over by 311. Let's talk about the eclipse timeline because there are several things that you could experience and you want to look for as long as skies are clear. 50 minutes before totality, there's gonna be a decrease in solar energy. As the sun begins to disappear, the Earth's surface will not be able to absorb as much sunlight or sun's energy. So the air temperature will drop a few degrees. Could be two degrees at first, and then 100% coverage, the air temperature may drop five, six, seven, eight degrees. And you may notice a difference out there. Also, if there's any puffy clouds, those clouds will probably weaken or actually disappear. And then they'll reform once again after the eclipse is done. 20 to 10 minutes before totality, the sky will become darker. You'll notice it gets a little more of a grayish hue to it and the colors will become more gray. It's almost like your eyes are, are playing tricks on you, but also the animals and plants will be fooled as well. You'll notice the animals will act a little strange. They're getting ready for bed. The birds might go into the trees and stop singing. You may hear crickets and frogs start to make some sound because they're thinking nighttime is near. And also plants that bloom during the day, like tulips or a morning glory, may start to close up. Other things to look for, five minutes before totality. Now this could be really interesting. If you look in a long, visible, uh, got a lot of visibility to the horizon. You want to look for uh, darkness, almost like an ominous look to the sky as there'll be a darkening along the horizon with the moon's shadow approaching your location at over 1600 miles per hour. So look out for that as long as skies are clear. And one minute before totality, there could be some weird things that do happen with the light because as the light starts to diminish more and more and more, those rays of light will interact with the Earth's atmosphere and you'll see waves of light possibly on the ground and also on the walls. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're under a pretty shady tree, like a big deciduous uh, maple or some other trees that have a lot of leaves to them, the cracks in between the leaves will act like pinhole projectors and those will actually cast the eclipse on the ground. So you could see hundreds of eclipses with projections of the leaves as the light goes through those leaves, casting uh, hundreds of projections on the ground. It's a very surreal effect. You could also witness the eclipse using a colander because those pinholes in the colander will also produce tiny eclipses along the ground. This is what you really wanna pay attention to. Seconds before totality, still have to keep those eclipse glasses on for the diamond ring effect and also Bailey's beads. But the final rays of light, as they make their way around the valleys and the mountains of the moon, they'll find their way across and then eventually get to your eye and it'll produce what's known as the diamond ring effect and also Bailey's beads. And this is something everybody always watches out for just before totality. It only lasts a few seconds, so you have to pay attention and don't get distracted by your phone trying to capture a picture or anything like that. You really want to just take in this experience as much as possible because it's not gonna be happening for a long, long time after this. Totality, now you can remove your eclipse glasses and now you can look directly at the black sun. And what you will see is this white glow. That is the corona of the sun. That is the outermost layer of the sun and it is very hot but we do not see this on a normal day-to-day -day basis because it's blocked out by the rest of the sun's light. So the only time you can see this almost like angelic glow <laughs> around the sun is during a total solar eclipse, as long as skies are clear. Also, you may be able to see a prominence or a burst of plasma from the sun that will link its way from one sunspot to the next if it shoots out into space, it's known as a solar flare. So you could also see that as well. I told you how dark it's gonna be. It's gonna look like twilight out there. You might be able to see the planet Venus or even Jupiter and maybe some of the brightest stars in the sky just because it's going to get that dark. But 
it's all a wash if we have clouds in place. It'll still get dark, but we won't be able to see the diamond ring effect. We won't be able to see the corona. We won't be able to see Bailey's beads if we have clouds in place. And hopefully that's not the case. But when we take a look at the breakdown now, this is for the cloud climatology of April 8th over the past 30 to 40 years using data from North Carolina State University, which has also teamed up with NOAA. And here's the breakdown of the sky conditions. 16% of those days or years were clear. 18% were few, but look at that. Mostly cloudy and overcast. Those numbers are up there. And it's no surprise because April, of course, you have April showers, you have thunderstorms in April, you can have low clouds in April, but you can also have some really nice days in April. So hopefully we get a very nice day after cold front has made its way through, clears things out, and the visibility is just gonna be fantastic because we don't want a lot of humidity out there either. But when you look at the statistics, here's the breakdown now. There is a 49% chance skies will be clear enough to see the eclipse on April 8th. And if we miss this eclipse, like I said, it's gonna be quite some time until the next one arrives here, not only in Arkansas, but for the entire United States. Total solar eclipses happen across the world every so often, every five years or so, but they don't happen in the United States very often. So the next one we have to wait on is 2045, and that one will make its way through Arkansas. But again, this is once in a lifetime event, so hopefully, We'll be able to witness this. And if you are looking for more information, be sure to check out THV11's website because we will continue to have a lot more information on everything you need to know about the eclipse. Along with that, we'll eventually have forecasts to talk about cloud percentages and if that's going up, if it's going down as we get closer and closer to the event. One more thing before I go, because I know a lot of you are thinking, okay, how do I take a picture of this eclipse with my phone? The best way to do that is put it in selfie mode. So if I have this in selfie mode, the sun is behind me, the lens is aimed at the sun, and you can put your eclipse glasses over the lens pretty easily, or you can buy something for your phone as well. And that's gonna be one of the best ways to get a picture of the eclipse. But again, stuff happens fast, totality, and the diamond ring effect, Bailey's beads, they only last a few seconds, so don't be fooling around with your phone and miss something spectacular like that. Bailey's beads, the ring effect happen right before totality, and then once again, right after totality as everything goes in reverse. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've gotten a lot of information that you've been looking for. I'm meteorologist Nathan Scott, thanks for watching. <laughs>